Welcome to another Salesing.com Rules Discussion. In this series, we're breaking down the 2021 to 2024 Racing Rules of Sailing. This series is an update to the Fair Sailing Initiative sponsored by the ILYA in 2018. In this video, we'll cover the rules related to protests, hearings, and redress. These are Rules 61, 62, and 63 in Part 5 of the Rules. We'll cover these rules from a sailor's perspective and leave out the details that apply to the Race Committee and Protest Committee. Here's an overview of protests and redress. Rule 60 covers who can protest or request redress. Competing boats have a right to protest another boat, request redress, or report actions of potential misconduct by other boats, that's Rule 69, or any rule violations by support persons. We'll go over the requirements for protests and redress in more detail. For actions of potential misconduct or support person violations, you don't formally protest. Instead, you just report the incident to the protest committee. Also note that a boat can't protest the race committee. We'll talk more about that when we cover redress. Race committees, protest committees, and technical committees may also protest boats or request redress for boats with certain limitations. We won't get into the details of those limitations. Rule 61 covers protest requirements. Here's Rule 61.1a. This rule is important to sailors because it specifies how you must inform another boat if you intend to protest. The rule language is long, so we're not going to read it. The text is shown with 2021 changes in red. None of the changes to this rule were significant. Here are the key points. To protest another boat, you must hail protest. You must use the word protest. Also display a red flag if your boat is longer than 6 meters, about 19 and a half feet. You must hail at the first reasonable opportunity. This is normally immediately, but you can delay for the following reasons. If the other boat is too far away, you can let them know as soon as possible after finishing. If the other boat did not sail the course, you can let them know you intend to protest after the other boat finishes. No flag is required in this case. If a crew member is in danger, or if there is an injury or serious damage, you are not strictly required to let the other boat know that you're protesting, but you should attempt to inform them within the time limit. Rule 61.1b gives requirements if the race committee, the protest committee, or a technical committee intends to protest a boat. They must inform the boat within the time limit. We'll discuss the time limit in the next slide. They can use a notice on the official notice board to inform the boat. This is a change for 2021. The only way you may find out if the race committee or a protest committee protests you is by reading the official notice board. Rules 61.2 and 61.3 specify the protest contents and the time limit. The text is shown on the right. You need to write down your protest and deliver it to the race office within the time limit. Give as much information as you can within the time limit, but don't panic if you can't get all the information before the time limit. Only the description of the incident is required when you submit the protest. The name of the protestee is required before the hearing. The remaining information can be supplied before or during the hearing. Rule 61.3 addresses the time limit. The wording was changed for 2021, but there is no significant impact on sailors. The time limit may be stated in the sailing instructions. If not stated, the time limit is two hours after the last boat finishes. Let's review two common questions about protests. Many sailors are reluctant to protest another boat because they think it is mean or unsportsmanlike. Others don't want the hassle of a protest meeting after a day of racing. How should you think about these objections? It's not mean or unsportsmanlike to protest someone. 
Protesting is one important way to ensure that we all play by the same rules. If a boat breaks a rule and does not take a penalty, she gains an advantage against all the other boats in the race, not just the boat she fouled. Furthermore, the protest process is not hard. The protest form requires some basic facts and a simple drawing. As we'll see shortly, if arbitration is available, the process can be even simpler. Let's say that another boat fouls you, but there is no damage or injury. You say, do your circles. The other boat does not take any penalty, so you file a protest following the race. Is your protest likely to be successful? Your protest is extremely unlikely to be successful. The protest committee will almost certainly determine that your protest is invalid because you didn't use the word protest in accordance with Rule 61.1. Remember the exceptions to this rule, cases in which you don't have to hail protest immediately. Appendix T of the racing rules covers arbitration. Many organizing authorities, including the ILYA, are promoting the use of arbitration as a way to streamline the process and encourage more sailors to engage with the rules. Here are the key points. Appendix T is an optional process that applies only if the sailing instructions or notice of race so state. Appendix T prohibits arbitration if there was injury or serious damage. Arbitration introduces a step in the process that may resolve the issue without need for a formal protest meeting. This can save time for everyone, including the boats involved and the judges on the protest committee. If arbitration is specified in the sailing instructions, the boats involved in a protest will first attend an arbitration hearing led by an arbitrator familiar with the racing rules. The arbitrator will hear both sides, ask questions, and then offer an opinion. This opinion is not binding. After hearing the arbitrator's opinion, the boats involved may choose to make one of two decisions. First, the protesting boat could decide to withdraw the protest. Second, either boat could decide that they were wrong and take a 30% scoring penalty. If neither of these occurs, the issue continues to a protest hearing. Rule 63 covers protest hearings. We're just going to summarize this rule by giving an outline of the process. Read Rule 63 on your own if you want to become familiar with all the requirements for a protest hearing. The protest committee is normally made up of three members that are experienced in the rules. The number of members is not specified in the rules. The protest committee will first determine if the protest is valid by asking questions. Did the protester hail protest? If so, when? Did the protester fly a red flag? And when? Was the protest form adequate? This is not to imply that the form has to be 100% complete and contain every fact required. If the protest is not valid, the hearing will end. Otherwise, the protest moves to evidence gathering. Both parties will explain what happened. The protest committee will ask questions, the parties will ask each other questions, and the committee will hear evidence from witnesses. The parties and witnesses will leave, and the protest committee will decide the outcome. After deciding the outcome, the committee will call the parties back and announce their decision. If you're not satisfied with the decision, you can appeal in accordance with Rule 70. Finally, let's discuss Rule 62, which covers redress. You might want to request redress if your score was made significantly worse for reasons beyond your control. Rule 62.1 gives the acceptable reasons for requesting redress. The first acceptable reason is due to an action by the race committee, protest committee, unless the boat was part of a protest, or the organizing authority. An example of this might be if a race committee changes the position of a mark but does not signal it to some competitors, causing them to sail extra distance. In this case, these boats could request redress. Note that you do not protest the race committee. You request redress to adjust your score, which was made worse by the actions of the race committee. 
Also, you can't request redress if you were involved in a protest hearing and the decision went against you. The second acceptable reason is if another vote caused injury or damage and was breaking a rule of Part 2. Note this requires both injury or damage and a violation of the rules of Part 2. In this case, the incident should have gone to a protest committee, and the protest committee may decide to give you redress. However, an important change for 2021 is that in order to be granted redress, the other boat must have taken a penalty or been penalized, so be sure to protest the boat if needed. The next acceptable reason is if you give help to another boat in danger under Rule 1.1. Remember that Rule 1.1 requires a boat competitor or a support person to give all possible help to any person or vessel in danger. Finally, you can request redress if another boat, crew member, or support person violates Rule 2, which is the fair sailing rule, or resulted in a penalty under Rule 69 which is the misconduct rule. A 2021 change was that support persons were added to Rule 62.1. Rule 62.2 states that to request redress, deliver a written notice to the race office within the protest time limit. A 2021 change was that on the last day of racing, the time limit for requesting redress is 30 minutes after the protest committee posts the decision. So be sure to read the notice board or stay aware of any protests that might affect your score. There are many more rules in Part 5 that we haven't covered. Here are those that we didn't. Rule 64 covers decisions. It guides the protest committee on making decisions, including use of evidence, assessing penalties, redress, class rules violations, and issues with support persons. 65 covers informing the parties and others. 66 covers reopening a hearing. 67 covers damages. This section covers the often delicate situation of liability for damages. This would be a good rule to read on your own. Rule 69 covers misconduct. Misconduct is a breach of good manners, a breach of good sportsmanship, unethical behavior, or conduct that may bring the sport into disrepute. You can be penalized for misconduct, although you cannot protest another boat or person for misconduct. 70 covers appeals. If you appeal a protest committee decision, the appeal will be heard by the national authority. In the U.S., that's U.S. sailing. And finally, 71 covers national authority decisions. The national authority can order a protest hearing to be reopened or can uphold or reverse a protest committee's decision. National authority decisions are final. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment. If you like our videos, please subscribe. Also visit our website at salesing.com for much more content and some unique sailing products.